David Bowie. Let me make this clear from the outset. This is not going to be some factual biography about David Bowie's career, a discography re-encountering my favourite tracks in some kind of desert island disc format. I've never met this man, and imagine the conversation would be one-sided now. I do appreciate his work, and because of this, I've developed certain memories over time, and in respect of his memory, I thought I would share them. The first real memory I have of David Bowie was seeing an image of what must have been Ziggy Stardust. I can tell you, for a child who was raised in a secluded village up until this point, this image was terrifying. A potential villain in a Doctor Who episode, which is what I would have thought if that was around. This image and lack of understanding admittedly scared me away from his work for a while. It was not until a few years later when I encountered my slightly intoxicated mother singing Heroes from a Best of Bowie DVD that I really began to enjoy his work. Do not get me wrong, I know the circumstances and timing were weird, but in an attempt to blur out this awkward encounter, I focused on the television to watch this cool, slightly remote and almost a thorough character perform an incredibly passionate performance of a song I had heard before but could not place up until this point. While I was growing up, as most children are, my music taste was very similar to that of my family's. The tape cassettes we listened to as we travelled to and from my grandparents or the family friends were the only times I really got to listen to music, or at least enjoy it. My music taste was definitely inspired by my dad and brother, but it was my mum who appreciated David Bowie the most, which was surprising coming from a person who listens to The Archers, Heart FM and most shockingly, The X Factor. The family record player, and by that I mean my dad's, was always an interest to me. It gave way to explore music that was not available at the supermarket, Woolworths or wherever I hunted to find it. As you may have assumed, I lived in a small town at the time. There were three records I played over and over again when the house was empty. Dr. John, Destively Bonnaroo, Bob Marley and the Wailers, Babylon by Bus and Uprising, or more often than not, David Bowie Hunky Dory. The first two records required me to already be in a certain frame of mind to enjoy, but from the first track, Hunky Dory has always been able to bring out changes in my mood. Oh You Pretty Things, the second track of the album, will forever go down as one of my all-time favourite songs, capable of raising a pleasant mood into something greater, whilst able to console me during more unstable times. Around a year ago, out of the blue, to which I cannot recall the exact day or the circumstances, I received a parcel in the post. Inside the parcel was a pink vinyl of David Bowie Hunky Dory. It did not take me long to work out who got it for me. It was a girl I had a crush on, and this made it easy for me to understand why. I've never really received gifts outside of the usual circumstances, birthdays and Christmases, so to receive something spontaneously about a personal time I have only mentioned in passing to a few who seem remotely interested, I felt that my voice was being heard, or even better, understood, which felt all the more important coming from her. Now all I needed to obtain was a record player, but this would not come till months later. The day in which I discovered David Bowie had joined the what should be known as the 69 Club, not because of some previously undertook sexual activity, but because he, like a few famous others, had begun to die at the age of 69, Alan Rickman being another of note. I recall a song we often played and sang along to when driving, Don McLean's American Pie for one line in particular, but something touched me deep inside the day the music died. Before realising it would be foolish to honour his death using another artist. After all, Bowie had already written his own epitaph through all the songs he had written over the years that reflected the change in his life, especially within his last record, Black Star, the farewell song Lazarus that was released just days before his passing. The send off we arranged was quite fitting a small group of close friends and myself drinking and singing songs in the living room. Perhaps. My mother was not so weird, after all. <laughs>